So the next thing I want to show you about root 2 is that root 2 is irrational. So it can't be expressed as a fraction in whole numbers. So there are no two whole numbers that when you divide one by the other, you get root 2. Uh, and again, the Greeks knew this, and there are, there are a lot of proofs that uh, root 2 is irrational, and most of them are pretty boring. But um, I want to show you a geometric proof, because I think it's lovely. And, uh, you know, geometry is just boss, really, in mathematics. So um, here's how the proof goes. So if we did have um, two numbers, P and Q, two whole numbers, two integers uh, that were equal to root 2, then it would be true that P squared divided by Q squared would be equal to root 2 squared, which is 2. Okay, and that would be the same as saying that P squared is equal to 2 Q squared. So if root 2 were rational, then there must be two whole numbers uh, such that P squared is twice Q squared. So if we draw that out in geometry, well, let me just put it back so I don't forget it, P squared equals 2 Q squared. OK, so let's draw that out as a square. So that's going to be my square of side uh, P. And that's equal to the sum of two smaller squares of side Q. So I'm going to draw those in. I'm going to put them inside so that they overlap. So these two smaller squares are of side Q. another one here. Side Q. Okay. Um, so in other words, if these were pieces of paper and they overlapped in that central square, I could cut this one of these pieces out and then cut it up into smaller pieces so that it, it filled these gaps. Okay. So what are the sizes of these three squares on the diagonal? Well, this is P minus Q. Its side is P minus Q and its area is P minus Q squared. This one here, well, if this is Q and this is P minus Q, then this must be 2Q minus P in its side. And therefore, the area is 2q minus p squared. And then this one here is the same as that one. So that's uh, p minus q squared. So um, as I was saying earlier, this overlapping area, if we cut one of the overlapping pieces out, it would fill this area. So in other words, We've got this square here, which measures 2q minus p, which is some other type of integer. Um, we get it by doubling q and subtracting p, so it must be a whole number. Uh, and that's a square, and it's equal to the sum of these two. So it's equal to twice some other smaller square this one, in fact, um, P minus Q. So we can draw it out just like the last one. So basically, we've um, we've reduced the problem to a smaller, having having started with some um, pair of squares, one of which is twice the size of the other. We've produced 
a pair of smaller squares, one of which is twice the size of the other, and we can just repeat the same process over and over again until we get down to squares of size one, and then we'd still have to be able to keep going. Um, but obviously we can't because then our, our integer squares become smaller than one. Um, so we're forced to the only possible conclusion, which is that the starting conditions were invalid and, and there can't be any such, uh, any such pair of numbers, p squared and q squared, that twice, one is twice the other. Um, and I mean, you could, if you're not convinced, you could actually work it through with actual examples. So you could take something like um, 17 over 12, which is quite a good approximation to root 2. So you can actually put those values in here and say that's 17 and that's 12. And this is going to then be uh, 17 minus 12, which is 5 squared. And this one will be 2q minus p, so that's 24 minus 17, uh, which is 7. And this will be 5 again. So, you know, you'd end up with um, a similar pair, which would be 7 by 5 here. And then you could reduce that down again. And you will, eventually you'll end up forced into the uh, situation where... You've got something that clearly doesn't work because the sides measure less than one or, um, or they're, they're just all the same size.